Hello and welcome to the round of Mansfield, the seventh race of the PCC Cup Series season here in 2014. And uh, this is the first of three overcapacity events uh, this year for the PCC Cup Series. 136 cars attempted to qualify for this race. JW Brancher and Isaac Michaels secured their spot on the pole and the rest of the field, 46 cars this time, uh, was sorted by a practice session that occurred after all of the tier qualifiers were run. Uh, there were a couple driver substitutions that occurred, Alex Phillips and Cody Deke are in the 11 and 61 after uh, Johnson Racing's part-time drivers qualified those cars. Laris Ryu bought out the Gymkhana Autosport 143 from, uh, I believe that was Kenneth Cube. Uh, so your points leader here will be starting uh, today, as well as Ben Atkins bought out the Racing for Craft uh, Chris DeSanta car, uh, renumbered to one uh, renumbered from 157 to 5, uh, so Ben Atkins will get owner's points for that, and uh, I believe the last sub that we have here today is Ben Worthington there, starting in 28th position, uh, driving for the Motorsports team. Uh, Lucas Motorsports bought out the 6 car from Dale Kensington Jr., who successfully managed to qualify that car in the Tier 4 qualifier, and uh, he's going to start 28th here today. Uh, there were, as I mentioned before, there were 100 36 cars on the entry list, and uh, 90 cars ended up going home here today. So the drivers that made it uh, are extremely lucky to be racing here today. Uh, Roy Cook actually uh, is a substitute as well. He's starting in 40th place. Uh, Sam Lussar was initially supposed to be in that car, but he disappeared uh, when the cars were lining up to go here today. So Roy Cook is going to jump in that 21 and drive for them. Pole sitter J.W. Brancher leads the field to the green flag for his first ever PCC Cup Series start here today. Uh, Isaac Michael starts to drop back on the outside as Nicholas Cordovos takes over second place for 250 green flag laps of racing. There are no cautions here today, which is a rule that was instated for the first time ever. Denny Ams gets involved in a wreck with Ben Worthington, Neil Underwood, and a bunch of cars pile and Gaspar D'Souza is involved. Uh, looks like Kurt Pliskin and John Bracci, and everyone drives away. Looking in the back, John Bracci got into Gaspar D'Souza and sent around uh, Kurt Pliskin there. Uh, looks like the damage is not too bad on all of these cars. Going on board with Neil Underwood, a sprint car champion. And uh, he did pretty much a good job until he ran into Robert Nelson there. Neil Underwood making his first ever... Uh, PCC Cup Series start here for 7th Gear Autosport USA going on board with Jacob Eichholz and oh he just barely avoided that wreck and gets into Expand Dong there but he's going to continue on uh, looking at Expand Dong the first ever Chinese driver to start a uh, PCC Cup Series race and what a save he saved that car despite being in a four wheel slide and here is JW Brancher who continues to lead uh, coming to lap number two and uh, this is his first ever PCC Cup Series start, and he's trying to put New Mexico on the map to become the greatest driver from New Mexico of all time, and he's certainly doing a good job here so far. Here's Alex Phillips uh, running in 14th place, and he is currently the best of the substitute drivers. Uh, Sam Brown qualified this car in one of the tier qualifiers, and unfortunately Alex Phillips DNQ'd, but uh, Johnson Racing put their full-time drivers in the cars that qualified. Laris Ryu here is running in 23rd, and right behind her is Cody Deke in the 61 in 24th place. Two more substitute drivers. Corey Havoki gets into the side of Denny Adams, takes none of that, and he gets put into the wall, tipping his fedora at that car there, and uh, he's going to continue on without too much of a problem. Ben Worthington bought out the Motorsports Team number 14 car, which was renumbered in number 6, and that car doesn't look too good, but it's running in 36th place at the moment, and the final car uh, that is a substitute is Ben Atkins here in, uh, uh, he, he just went a lap down, so he's not doing too uh, well, but then again, it is the Racing for Craft car, and he is in the race, so he is getting points here today. Neil Underwood, uh, is running pre oh, oh he just got turned by the leader and that's gonna end his day very early on a tough break for Neil Underwood he had such a good run going just the fact that he managed to qualify that car and seventh gear Autosport USA's presence in the race is going to end very early on on lap number 10 as Underwood goes out of the race here's James Hewitt uh, he just went a lap down he got bumped there by Ray Lee in the 069 
a short tracker from Cincinnati. And uh, Hewitt managed to qualify for this race. He finished second in his Tier 4 qualifier, but he's been uh, doing all right here. Corey Havoki had a problem, and he brought his car into the pits. He's going to merge back out on track, but he is about four laps down right now. And uh, here is Nicholas Corradovos, who's really closing in on the number eight car of JW Brancher, and he has just been on fire here today. Uh, he is by far the fastest car that um, by far the fastest car on track right now, uh, but Brancher's been able to hold him off. Here is uh, John Jefferson running in 16th place. He didn't have a very good qualifying effort, but he finished second in the Tier One qualifier. So not uh, not a good qualifier, but his race pace is crazy. Duncan Cobb is uh, currently uh, a lap down right now. He's running in 24th place, but he is your second place driver in points, and he's definitely trying to make a good impression, trying to make his way up into uh, first place in points. And I believe at this point he is running in front of Laris Ryu, who is uh, currently leading the points. Here's Isaac Michaels. He's dropped all the way back to fifth place from the start on lap 25 of 250. And uh, he's just trying to hang in there and uh, stay near the front, trying to get a good break. His uh, race pace isn't quite as good as the other cars, but his qualifying pace is very good. Junior Hardern got spun there by uh, James Hewitt. Junior Hardern got into this race by a technicality uh, when Odie Arbuckle was disqualified. Uh, he finished 12th in the Tier 4 qualifier and managed to get his way into the field. He is the slowest car on track by far, but at least he qualified. Wayne Coulter is running in 11th place in this um, Chevrotar number 76 car. Uh, that car is interesting, but he is about to go a lap down on lap number 38. So JW Brancher is setting a heated pace, and uh, just like that, there are only 10 cars on the lead lap by lap 39. Frank Azzaretto getting alongside uh, Kale Bernfart Jr. and Gabriel Messina there, and he is having a very good run himself. He's currently in ninth place. One of the best showings we've seen out of Frank Azzaretto this entire year so far. And uh, what a place to show it, too. Pete Maverick is having a pretty good run. He's in 16th place. But, oh, he's bailing for the pits. He's reporting a problem on that car. Uh, right rear suspension failure on the number 86 car. So, unfortunately, what was looking to be a good day for Pete Maverick turns disastrous early on. Cody Deek running next to his teammate, Cale Bernfart Jr., and he gets, hurt. he gets hooked into the wall. By the leader, J.W. Brancher. Oh, he gets into Clara Kindle there, and his car is sitting in the middle of the track. There's Alex Phillips, and there is Isaac Michaels. What a huge blow for Isaac Michaels. He was running in the top five, and that's going to take him out of the race, going on board with J.W. Brancher, and he just dumped him. He got a bit of left side damage, but he is going to stay on track and stay the leader. And uh, Clara Kindle gets into the side of Duncan Cobb. Just had nowhere to go. And you see the left front damage there on that car. Here, looking at Alex Phillips as he tries to make it through. He gets into the side of Cody Deak and puts Ben Worthington in the wall for the second time this race. Phillips will continue on without too much of a problem. He's going to have to get rear end damage repaired. And Isaac Michaels just had nowhere to go. He was running in fifth place at the time. And, oh, Henry Lee Beaver ran into him there, going on board with Michaels. And he just had nowhere to go. What a heartbreak for him. He was looking to have such a good run here today, and he desperately needed a good run. Laris Ryu got involved, too, and uh, Corradovos just got bumped by Elena Lazareva, but he's reporting some kind of um, fuel intake issue with that uh, 39 car, and he's dropped way back into the field. Uh, he's back in fourth place right now, and he's losing about a second a lap to the leader, J.W. Brancher, who's got a bit of front-end damage there on the uh, left front quarter panel, but that hasn't seemed to slow him down in that number eight Mazda. He's been really just trucking along, but uh, Ray Lee in the 069 car has come to life. He's up to second place in this uh, car, which got last minute sponsorship from the Rotanistan Tourism Board. You can see uh, that's plastered all over that car. Uh, Rotanistan is a um, Eastern European nation uh, aggressively pursuing a um, uh, tourism here today. Jacob Eicholtz has really had quite um, quite a run here today. He's up to 19th place. He started in 43rd, uh, but he's really picked his way through the field, and uh, by lap 54 now, he's up in the top 20. 
So keep an eye on this car later in the race. Here's Alina Lazareva running in second place, and uh, she's really starting to come to life. And uh, well, second place. No, she's in fifth place. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Uh, but Alina Lazareva is in fifth place. Uh, Sylvia Rinaldi right behind her, and they're picking their way through lap traffic. And uh, Alina Lazareva really adapting well to these short tracks. She has never been to Mansfield before, but she's certainly driving like she had been here before, doing quite a good job here today. And uh, looks like Nicholas Corridovo's problems are getting worse. He just got passed for 10th by Chris Benson there in the 55 car. Chris Benson having a good run, but Nicholas Corridovo's preferring to stay on track and hoping that the issue is going to remedy itself, but uh, if as he keeps doing this, he's just losing time to the leader. Joe Craig, oh, he's got a problem. He's pulling high. Joe Craig was running in fourth place on lap number 63, holds up his teammate Gaspar D'Souza there, gets into the side of Lina Lazareva, uh, but unfortunately for Joe Craig, he's going to pull down onto the apron, and I think he's going to drop out of the race after this, which is a huge blow for the 29 team. Again, they were hoping for a good run. Oh, uh, looks like Expandong pushes up the track, gets into Alino Zerva, and hits the inside wall very hard. Uh, that car does not sound too healthy right now, and he's going to pull that car into the pits, but continue on. Claire Aussier has gotten around Roy or Ray Lee for the second position. So Claire Aussier now starting to surge her way through the field, gets around Laris Ryu there, who's been off the pace all day. Uh, but Claire... Uh, Claire Aussier starting to hunt down the leader. J.W. Brancher, uh, you can see how much the gap has closed, but he's stuck in lap traffic. He's putting Nicholas Cordovos a lap down right now. So that just tells you how far Cordovos has fallen from being right on Brancher's tail to now just going a lap down, and he is way off the pace. But Aussier is gaining very slowly but surely. Laris Ryu is your current points leader, and she's in 21st place. Uh, she's been off the pace all day, but has managed to hang on and uh, is shaping up to have a decent run. Uh, and Duncan Cobb, she has closed the gap to Duncan Cobb. Duncan Cobb is in 17th place. So at this point, I don't think that Cobb would take over the points lead, uh, but he's going to have to gain some positions if he's going to do that. Oh, there's some smoke there, but here is John Jefferson, uh, who has worked his way into 8th place. So he is surging forward as this race starts to um, near its halfway point. Junior Harden got into, looks like John Bracci and Frank Azzaretto went around. Frank Azzaretto was running in fifth place, uh, just four wide not working here today. And uh, they're all going to continue on. Oh, actually, Junior Harden is reporting some uh, engine issues in that 888 car, and that is going to take him out of the race. Uh, he was running quite a few laps down, but that's just going to end his day early. Silvio Rinaldi up to fourth place, having a good run. Greg Woodard there on the apron. We've got to see what happened to him. But Silvio Rinaldi having a good run in the top five. Greg Woodard reporting a left rear suspension failure in this number 41 car from 16th place. And he was hoping for a good run as well. But unfortunately, it's going to end here on lap number uh, 91. And... Uh, He's going to go out of the race pretty early. And uh, Greg Woodard really kind of struggled this year. He's not had too many good runs, and he desperately needed this to get higher in the points. Claire Aussier now. Um, oh, she's reporting some trouble in that number zero car. Uh, she was one of the cars that, is, that was involved in that four-wide situation. She's going to pull that car into the pit. She's reporting an engine miss on the zero car, but they're going to get that looked at, and they're going to fix that damage. Silvia Rinaldi is now, uh, she is currently on the tail end of the lead lap as Laris Ryu dives into the pits, or reporting a problem with that car. Uh, Joe Craig did end up getting his car fixed, uh, but he's quite a few laps down, and uh, Silvia Rinaldi just trying to battle her way. Uh, to stay on the lead lap under the assault of J.W. Brancher, who has just set a heated pace here today. Uh, Ryan Griffin, uh, one of the other points uh, contenders, is running in ninth, and Stringfellow Vincent right behind him in 10th place. Both of those drivers are in the top 10 in points and really looking for good runs here today. Duncan Cobb is in uh, 14th place, and Jacob Eicholtz has moved up to 15th right behind him. 
Uh, Cobb and Eichholz have both had good runs here today, and uh, they're going to try and stay up front and capitalize on other drivers' mistakes. Greg Maddox having a good run in, I believe he's in 11th place right now, but though there's smoke pouring out of that car. He's done for sure. So Greg Maddox drops out from 11th place, and he was near the front of the points as well. Uh, he, Stringfellow Vincent gets hooked by Ray Lee and goes into the inside wall from 10th place, but it doesn't look like that damage is too bad, and he's going to continue on without too much of a problem here today. X Pandong, the first Chinese driver to start a PCC Cup Series race, that car does not look good. All the fire coming out of the tailpipes there. Uh, he has reported that the oil pressure in that car has dropped to zero, and uh, he's getting no power, so unfortunately the day is going to end here fairly early on for X Pandong. Uh, who was really just hoping to finish this race. He finished ninth in his Tier 4 qualifier and made it into the main race. Four wide does not end well for Ryan Griffin and Denny Adams as both cars go into the wall. There was uh, Robert Nelson there as well, who managed to scoot away without too much of an issue, but uh, looks like they got stuffed into the wall. Ben Worthington gets hooked by J.W. Brancher. Third car taken out by Brancher, and uh, Worthington is going to uh, continue on despite the damage, and... Let's see. Oh, we've got J.W. Brancher is smoking. The leader has wrecked here on lap number 102. And he got hooked there by Sylvia Rinaldi. And Joe Craig came in and finished the deal. And J.W. Brancher is going to retire from the race on lap number 102. And Ray Lee, you saw there on the outside, the 069 car, is going to inherit the lead from J.W. Brancher. There's Claire Ossie trying to get a lap back. Uh, but it looks like Ray Lee has quite a lead over second place. Duncan Cobb now is up to 10th uh, place. So Duncan Cobb having a fantastic run in this number 70 car. And at this point, I really think he would inherit the points lead. Uh, if uh, not for Silvio Rinaldi, I believe Rinaldi may be in the points lead. Uh, but I cannot verify this. Nicholas Cordovos finally commits to pit road. Uh, to fix his fuel system issues after uh, they did not fix themselves. Barbara Burt having a good run. Lap 112, she's in 13th place. And uh, looking for a strong run here today. She hasn't had too many of those. Uh, and just hoping to do a good job. Well, I just jinxed that because she's reporting some suspension issues on that 366 car, and that's going to take her out of the race uh, on lap 114. Lenny Jacobs having a strong run as well. He's in 8th place, and he's not really known as a short track driver, but he's doing quite a good job here today. He just got put two laps down by Ray Lee, but he's having a good run. John Jefferson having a really good run. If you're going to talk about somebody who's having an excellent run, he's running in 5th place in this Cleveland Speed Incorporated car. Cleveland Speed Incorporated has run in this series every year since its inception. Uh, and uh, returning here today at Mansfield, Chris Benson also having a very good run. He's in seventh place. Uh, the Las Vegas native, uh, known for running the short tracks out there, transferring that knowledge over to Mansfield and putting it into a top 10 run. Uh, here is Cordovos running in 25th place, eight laps down, but he is currently the fastest car on the track by far. He just ran his fastest lap of the race, and he just unlapped himself. So now Cordovos is seven laps down, and he's already worked his way up to 22nd place by this shot. And you can just see the gap that he pulled on the leader there. So Nicholas Cordovos really on fire here today, but maybe too many laps down to do anything with it. Ben, Worthing ben Worthington's day ends early, uh, just past the halfway point as he pulls that car onto pit road, reporting some suspension issues. And unfortunately for John Jefferson, uh, the 73 car gives out on him. Uh, he lost oil pressure, and uh, that car is dead. He would drop out of the race due to an oil leak, pull that car onto the apron, and uh, hop out of it. It was a tough break for John Jefferson, who retires on lap number 148. Uh, Ray Lee now, uh, he has lapped the field, and uh, he just pulled into the pits from the lead on lap number 157 of 250 green flag pit stops are beginning for the leaders and Alina Lazareva coming around there and she's going to inherit the lead so Alina Lazareva the Russian native who has never been to this track before is currently leading the round of Mansfield uh, 
So Alina Lazareva having an excellent run here today, and I believe that she is going to be a driver that we're going to have to watch later in the season, as it appears that if she keeps running like she is, she is going to be a championship contender. Uh, Lazareva commits to the pit lane. I don't think she was expecting Roy Cook in the 21 to be there, but she got onto pit lane all the same. James Hewitt having some brake issues, and he just overshot his pit stall by two stalls. Uh, they're going to get the brakes fixed on that 155 car and send him out in a few laps. Uh, Ray Lee has lapped the field uh, again now that he's come out of the pits and Lazareva has committed. Uh, Sylvia Rinaldi back there is in the top five, but she is two laps down and Azaretto, I believe, may have just passed her for position uh, there. Laris Ryu uh, checking in on the points leader is running in uh, 18th place, so she's improved a few positions, but not enough uh, to really do much, but uh, Duncan Cobb is in 15th place, so still doing a, a good job, but not a good enough job to inherit the points lead away from Laris Ryu in that 143 car. Nicholas Corradovos told you that he was uh, really on fire. He's up to 10th place four laps down because he is off cycle with the leaders. Corridovos in 10th place. Oh, Duncan Cobb just put Alex Phillips into the inside wall, and both cars are going to retire from the race. See there the cloud of smoke coming from Alex Phillips, and Duncan Cobb took enough damage from that wreck to take him out of the race. So a huge blow for the second place driver in the championship. Frank Azaretto is currently running in third place. A stellar performance uh, by the driver of the number 64 car, and he has been hard pressed for luck. Uh, his entire career, so this is a very good sign for him. Claire Aussier having a strong run. Uh, despite having that engine miss early on in the race, she's up to fifth place again, uh, partially due to being off cycle, but Claire Aussier looking for a strong run. She's needed one all season, and I think this is a good time for that to happen. Ben Atkins is up to 25th place in this number five car, which is impressive considering that it's the racing for craft car. Uh, ben Atkins is multiple laps down. He's over 10 laps down at this point, but he's just hanging in there, hoping for a good finish. Kurt Pliskin, haven't talked about him all day. He's up in eighth place on lap number 191 of 250, and he's really been hanging strong. He started way back in the field. He started in, I believe, 41st position. He's worked his way up into the top 10, and Ryan Griffin is up to ninth place. He's been holding strong in the top 10 all race long, and uh, really, I think this is going to pay off for Ryan Griffin, and as he's going to have an absolutely massive points haul. Claire Aussie having some additional problems in that zero car. She holds up Denny Adams there, uh, Daniel Sharp, who's having a good run, and Kurt Pliskin, and it looks like she's not going to make it back to the pits, I don't think. Uh, she's reporting another engine miss in that zero car and a tough break for Claire Aussier as she pulls that car to the inside. She was really looking like she was on pace for a top five finish, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. They would get that car fixed and send it back out on track. Talking about another driver that was uh, looking for a good finish here today, Tom Wilson is running in 11th place in this 91 car. One of the few Johnson racing cars that managed to qualify their way in on speed. And Wilson having a strong run here today just outside the top 10. Silvia Rinaldi reporting problems now from third place. So the Manticore cars are dropping like flies two in seven laps. But she's going to make her way back to the pits from third place. Uh, third place goes back to Frank Azaretto. Uh, and she's going to get that car back out on track after this. But uh, she's going to lose quite a few positions. Uh, here is... Roy Cook, who's running in 19th place, giving this 21 car a pretty good run, all things considered, with Sam Lussar uh, disappearing on race day. Um, I don't believe the team has found Lussar yet, but uh, Roy Cook doing a good job here, as it looks like Cordovos is going around Chris Benson for 5th place on lap 221, so he's really come to life. That fuel system issue fixed, and he is doing a phenomenal job in that 39 car rebounding from 25th about a, um, 75 laps ago. Wayne Coulter having a very strong run in fourth place on lap 225, 25 laps to go in this event. And Wayne Coulter driving this Chevrosar in fourth place. A fantastic job for him. Dave Hetzel 
Uh, subbing for Arliss Bennington in the 500 car is in 26th place on lap 227. He's been doing battle with Ben Atkins the past few laps, but Atkins has started to pull away, scrapes the outside wall there, and that car is not handling very well for Hetzel, but it's good to see him back in the main series, and uh, he's putting together a decent run for that 500 team. Alina Lazareva is on the um, is barely one lap down. She's trying to get herself back on the lead lap as Ray, Ray Lee is right there. If he slips up, she can make her way back onto the lead lap, but currently every single car is at least one lap down in the field. Here's two Red Bull uh, sponsored cars, different teams. Uh, Lewis Jones is having a pretty good run here today. He's running in the top 15, and Frank Azzaretto is in third place, so a good showing for the Red Bull guys as... Uh, well, Azzaretto's quite a bit faster than Lewis Jones, so he puts him a lap down or two there. But Lewis Jones is making a pass right now on Clara Kindall for, I believe, this is the 14th position. So Lewis Jones is looking pretty racy himself, uh, despite the fact that his car is not really uh, comparable to the leaders. Uh, James Hewitt gets hooked there by Wayne Coulter, and uh, Hewitt's miserable day continues to get worse, uh, but he's going to continue on. Uh, doesn't look like there's too much damage on that 155 car. He's just trying to soldier his way to the finish. He's been the model of consistency this year in the PCC Cup Series, despite not having too many good runs. Daniel Sharp having a good run. Haven't talked about him all day. He's running up in 19th place. Uh, he's really not done much all day, but he's been fairly consistent, and uh, he's been maintaining speed. And uh, he's a few laps down, but he's doing a good job right now. Uh, James Hewitt stays going to end with just a few laps to go, as that is a huge hit into the inside wall. That car is stuck in the inside wall. He got turned by Ryan Jeffries there. Uh, Hewitt would be okay, but just take a look at this on board as that car gets stuck in the wall and uh, snaps back and forth. And that occurred with just eight laps to go. On the same lap, Frank Azzaretto is reporting some electrical issues in that 64 car, and a huge blow for Frank Azzaretto as he pulls that car onto pit road from third place. He was looking at a podium run, and unfortunately, that car is just going to give up on him. Just eight laps from the finish. What a huge blow for Azzaretto. But look at this. Jacob Eichholz told you to keep an eye on him. He's running in 10th place. He started 43rd. And with just two laps to go, it looks like Eichholz is going to bring home a solid top 10 finish for this 88 team. But look at here, Ray Lee is going to lap the field and take his first PCC Cup Series victory in his first career start. The Ohio short tracker transferring his knowledge of Mansfield to this track, and he is going to dominate here today. Uh, coming to the finish, Gabriel Messina reporting some brake issues. See there, he holds up Brian Griffin, and that car is falling apart as he crosses the line, uh, weaving back and forth, and uh, I think Messina was just happy to finish. He pulls the car down to the apron there, and just stops and gets out of the car. Uh, just amusing for Gabriel Messina there. Um, finished multiple laps down, but managed to bring the car home in one piece. Now, looking at results, Selena Lazareva brought that car home in second place, and Nicholas Korodovos recovers to finish a surprising third, uh, despite finishing four laps down in that number 39 car. Wayne Coulter brings that car home in fourth place, a very strong effort for the Real American Racing Team. And Chris Benson gets a top five uh, in that 55 car, transferring his West Coast short track knowledge to the East Coast. Silvio Rinaldi manages to recover from that... Um, late pit stop to finish 6th. Uh, Ryan Griffin brings home a very strong finish in 7th place for that 44 team. That's going to do them wonders in the point standings. Kurt Pliskin and Stringfellow Vincent Retro 80 teammates finish 8th and 9th, and that's really going to help Stringfellow Vincent in his championship efforts. And Jacob Eichholz, despite finishing 8 laps down, finishes in 10th place with the forward fast racing team. They really needed that finish. Lenny Jacobs nearly gets into the top 10 in that 52 car. He had a strong run all day, uh, despite not really being known for his short track prowess. Lewis Jones uh, finishes in 12th place in the 9 car, uh, representing Red Bull up in 12th place. Clara Kendall uh, never really had too much speed all day, but finished in 13th place after getting involved in an accident early on. Tom Wilson faded late to finish 14th in that 91 car. 
and uh, he's really he was really happy to get that finish. Uh, the whole team was really happy to get that finish as Johnson Racing has sort of fallen from grace lately. Uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, uh, I believe that's a typo. That's supposed to be um, Henry Lee Beaver in the 776. We didn't talk about him all day, and I think that's why I made that mistake. But uh, yes, Henry Lee Beaver in the 776 did a good job despite getting involved in an accident early on. He had a very quiet run and uh, just soldiered home to finish in the top 15. Frank Azzaretto, despite retiring uh, with 11 laps to go, finished in 16th place. Claire Aussier, despite her engine issues, finished in 17th. Uh, Laris Ryu, substitute driver, uh, finished in 18th place in the 143 car, and that's going to help her uh, keep uh, herself in the championship. Daniel Sharp, quiet run, brings that car home in 19th place, and Roy Cook, substituting for Sam Lussar, finishes in 20th place, bringing that car home 13 laps down. Now, taking a look at points, Silvio Rinaldi has taken over the points lead over Ryan Griffin and Laris Ryu. Griffin and Ryu are in a tie for second, but Ryan Griffin has completed more laps this season than Laris Ryu, so he gets second place. Alina Lazareva jumps up to fourth place in the points after her very strong second place finish. Stringfellow Vincent up to fifth place. And Duncan Cobb has dropped all the way down to sixth place in points after his car expired uh, partway through the race. Nicholas Corradovos vaults from 21st to 7th in points up to uh, 202 points. And Ike Durbin, despite uh, not qualifying for this race, has fallen to eighth place. Uh, so not too far of a fall. He's only lost five positions despite missing this race. Greg Maddox is in ninth place, and Ben Atkins uh, has gained two spots in the standings up to 10th place, driving for uh, the Chris DeSanta team. Uh, Lewis Jones is in 11th place, and Richard Dean MacGyver has fallen down to 12th uh, due to not qualifying. I believe he was 5th place in points before. Isaac Michaels in 13th place, not the finish he was hoping for at all. And, uh, but he still remains in the top 20. Lenny Jacobs up to 14th. James Hewitt holding strong in 15th place, the model of consistency this season, as uh, Hewitt managed to finish, um, I believe he finished in 31st place, uh, despite falling out late in the going, but he still remains in the top 15. Clara Kindall appears in the top 15. Dan Lechleiter, despite missing the race, is in 17th place. Ben Worthington, uh, Roy Cook, and Daniel Sharp round out your top 20 after uh, all qualifying and Cook and Sharp having decent runs in the main race.